All right, let's continue on with our look at LaTeX and Overleaf. So what I want to really focus in on today, when we look at our code here that we've put together, what I'm noticing is it's becoming a bit of a wall of text in a sense, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to sort of keep tabs of exactly where everything is. This table here is scary looking. Uh, the preamble itself is looking a little bit cluttered and um, uh, it's just generally looking a little bit ragged right now. And there's some easy things that we can do to, to get around that problem and fix that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of these files that we have over here. And we're going to grow our file list and put more of the information over here on the left hand side and have less of the information sort of cluttering up our view over here. So for example, let's come down and see if there's some low hanging fruit here that we can kind of deal with first. Um, this table here, as I said before, it looks pretty scary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it. I'm going to select all of that. I'm going to cut it. Command X on a Mac, obviously. Um, and then obviously we don't want to lose that code. So we'll just create a new file. And I normally like to make my tables uh, six or seven. It just kind of depends. Um, so if we put it at number seven, perhaps then we could call it, um, I forget what that table was even about. Um, for, for want of a better title right now, I'm going to call it my nice table. If it was a table about incomes, then I would put a, you know, income table or, or something along those lines, a nice sort of name for it right there. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to paste that code that we had before. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use input. So forward slash input and one of the great things about Overleaf is it finds all your files nice and easily for autocomplete. So there we go. We've input my nice table. And so just in that particular part of our code now in our main.tex file, it's just looking a lot easier on the eye. It's a lot nicer. And it will still compile exactly as it did before. Nothing will change to the end user's sort of point of view. Um, the table will still be in there somewhere. Right, there it is there. Um, but it's just going to make our code look a little bit easier. And it's going to a little bit nicer. And it's going to be easier to sort of edit this as well. Because if we decide, oh, I just want to put that somewhere else now, it's very, very easy to just select and cut one line of code as opposed to lots and lots of lines. And if your table is really, really big, it's going to be all that much easier um, when you do that. Another thing that is a good thing to just put over there into the list of files is things like figures. This one's not too offensive because it's just including some graphics. But if we had put in a graph or something of that nature, which we'll do in a later video, um, those figure environments can get really, really big and very, very scary looking. So this is a good thing to put in its own little file. So let's do that. Now I won't fall into the same trap. This is a picture of Euler. <laughs> this time. So I'll know what I'm doing ahead of time. Let's create a new file. I like to put six for figures normally. These are just very arbitrary. You can come up with your own numbering scheme. Um, but it's just so it orders things nicely over there in that left hand column of files. Um, Euler. Let's just call it Euler for now. Okay, so six Euler, we'll go in there, we'll paste what we just had. And we can't forget, of course, to input that now. So we're gonna input and it's found it right there for us. So again, it's just a few lines of code that it's removed from our field of view, but the more you do that, the more um, benefit you're going to, to get from that. Now, so that's basically what we've done so far. This is where it's particularly useful to do that sort of stuff. So up here, up in the preamble, this preamble is looking pretty ordinary right now, and it could do with a little bit of work. One of the problems that I'm seeing is that it's not clear what all of these things do. So we haven't commented our code very well. So this would be sort of the, the title, 
the title, the author, and the date. Um, these things here, these theorems, definitions, remarks, and so forth, these are what I would call enunciations. And we'll put in some more of those over time. In none, in none, enunciations. I'm not spelling too well. I haven't had my morning coffee yet. Um, these are just some macros that we've de defined. And macros are the sorts of things, in my experience at least, you can end up with a ton of macros uh, that sort of help you do various things. Um, so that list of macros is going to grow over time. Uh, that's been my experience anyway. Uh, these are sort of referencing packages, I would say. Um, book tabs, graphic X, those are sorts of, what sort of packages are those? I'd, they're sort of like floating environment packages. Um, could we call them figures? Uh, tables. Later on, maybe we'll put in some caption packages in there. Um, so that that's that sort of stuff, I would say. And um, that's how they all sort of fit together. Can't lips in it. That, uh, it's a very, very useful package. I like to call that a layout package. I don't know if, strictly speaking, that's the right word for it. But it's sort of, that's what I'm using it for. It helps me lay out my page by putting some dummy text there and seeing what it's all going to look like. And over here, um, this would be my growing list of font packages. Um, right now, we've only got a single package there to do with fonts, but there are some other ones that could go in there. For example, my favorite package of all, some of you guys might have heard of this before. I shouldn't probably throw this in without telling you what it does. Whoops. Microtype. This is a brilliant package um, that we will hopefully have time to talk about in a later video. Okay, so this is looking, I hope you can see uh, a little bit more orderly now, the preamble. One side effect of that though, is that it's grown. It's, it's just physically more lines of code now. So although it's a little bit more readable, it's now clogging up our field of view a little bit more. So we're gonna use that same trick from before. What we're going to do, is we're going to grab all of this stuff, cut it, and we're going to make a new file. And because I want this up the top of my list of files, or towards the top, I'm going to call this one hyphen preamble. And for now, I'm going to call it a .tex file. We'll change that in a moment. So we'll come in here and we'll dump that down there. And we are going to have a very, very clean looking preamble now. So this is the preamble. And we're going to input, you guessed it, one hyphen preamble. Now, let's have a sanity check. Let's see if everything's just still compiles. I'm hoping that it will. Um, we're not getting any nasty errors or any warnings up here. So it's looking pretty good. Um, so that is still compiling, but now, Let's have a look at our code again. Look how clean this is looking. In my opinion, that's a much better sort of state of affairs compared to what we had before. Okay, now, I did say we're gonna just change this a little bit. This obviously works like this. I think it's good practice to call this, instead of a .tex file, let's call it a .sty file, which is, I guess, a style file. If we try and Compile it now, it's not going to work. Okay, we're going to get errors. It's going to say, no, this is no good. We didn't find one hyphen preamble.tex. So what we're going to do, instead of inputting our preamble, we're going to use a package. And essentially, that's what we've done. We've, we've made our own, we've made our first LaTeX package, and we've called it one hyphen preamble. And there it is right there. That's our preamble. And now when we compile, I'm hoping at least we won't get any of those errors anymore and everything's going to be hunky-dory and we're going to have a growing list of files here. And this is the basic idea. Anytime we've got any figures, we'll put a six out in front 
anytime we've got any tables, we'll put a seven out in front. And all of our preamble sort of stuff is going to go hidden away in here. So all this nasty stuff, particularly as this grows and gets longer and longer, that'll be hidden away from view. And we won't need to sort of worry about that. Okay, that's enough for this video.